Hello, Namaste, Satriakal, Salam Alaikum, Jeshi Krishna. Is there, is there anyone missing? Sara, what, what do you say in, in Bengal? Namaskar in Bengali. There you go, and, and, and many more. Welcome once again to India on 99.94, where, as you've gathered, we're, we're all inclusive. We want the whole of India to be involved in our cricket conversation, uh, where we discuss several times a week all the issues surrounding Indian cricket. I'm Nikesh Raghani, uh, host of this podcast, uh, journalist, broadcaster and commentator based in the UK, Sara Waris, my co-host. As you can see, if you're watching the YouTube feed or you'll be able to hear from in just a moment, of Wisden over in India, based in uh, Lucknow at the moment. Sara, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Been raining here. Yeah, good respite good, from you. the rain. Yeah, well, it's uh, it's coming to the end of monsoon season, is it there? Another month? Or? It's just started here. Oh, just started. Okay, different yeah. parts of India, uh, yeah. different monsoons, of course. Uh, here it's kind of coming to the end of the summer in the UK, which is Disappointing. We've had a great summer, great weather. It's been too hot at times. It's been more pleasant recently, but you know the days are just starting to get slightly shorter. But there is still plenty of, of cricket even over here as well. India's women, of course, mm. in England uh, to kick off that series on the 10th of September as well. And, and we'll talk about all that uh, in uh, just a few moments' time. Just a quick reminder that uh, as well as via YouTube, your usual podcast provider, we are also available on the 99.94 app, so do download that if you get a chance. You can find all our content there and join Cricket's Conversation, where it's not only us, we've got a whole range of podcasts and commentary as well. There'll be more to come in the coming weeks also. Uh, Sarah, there, there's only one way to kick off, really, uh, today. India through to the Super Fours of the Asia Cup. No surprise, really. I mean, look, it was, it was Hong Kong. It was more challenging than I think a lot of people... Mm would have perhaps thought uh, facing Hong Kong, a lot of Pakistani and Indian expats mainly making up that side. Um, it was professional. It was good. Let's just talk about the fact that India are in the Super Fours and we all expected that and it's kind of business as usual. But there were a few issues which we're going to talk about now. Let, let's kick off then. So Rohit Sharma wins the toss, uh, sorry, loses the toss and uh, is put into bat. At the toss, he said he would have bowled. So we're both breathing a sigh of relief because we wanted India to bat and we wanted to answer some of those question marks against some of the batters in our lineup, the likes of Kale Rahul, who's coming back from injury, Virat Kohli obviously needing to hit some form as well. Rishabh Bunt was in the side yesterday, so it would have been nice had he got a, a hit just to see how he went as well. Dinesh Karthik didn't get much of a knock in the first game either. So the, the, you know we were excited to see what India could do with the bat, um, but it was same old at the start, wasn't it? It was Rohit gets out, and then you've got Kale Rahul and Virat Kohli at the crease, doing their usual, getting set, and Kale Rahul eventually out for 36 off 39 balls. I mean, what was he doing out there? I think it's just an intent issue with Kale Rahul. Uh, his knock yesterday was the second slowest by an Indian opener ever in T20Is. 93 strike rate uh, are along those lines, which is just surprising. He he uh, attacked two balls yesterday and both were for sixes, but he was defending the full pitch delivery. So you're wondering if he can go out and attack, then why is he playing the way he is playing? Uh, for uh, in the previous two uh, episodes, we were like, uh, he's rusty, he's coming off a break. But I don't think it's rustiness now. It's just lack of probably intent, the dreaded word which we used for Dhoni for so many, like during the latter part of his T20I career. Uh, I don't know, what do you feel is going wrong with KL Rahul? Because he has so much of talent, but it's just, even in the IPL, we've seen he's just... Look, there's, there's, there's just some people, aren't there? Look, nobody's doubting his talent as a batter, yeah. as a cricketer. He's got all the talent in the world. That, doesn't, that talent doesn't make you automatically into a T20 international. Perhaps in, you know, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you could look at batters in that aspect that, look, they've got an all-round game, they'll be good across all formats. But the game has changed so much. I mean, you just look at what 
England have done in, in the last few years, what India are, are trying to do, supposedly, with this new side, the IPL, you know, the Aussies, the way they play at the top of the order as well. It's it's a changing game. The West Indies, of course, you know, for, for quite a few years now as well, have played that real attacking brand of cricket right from the off. And it's just not been India's way, and, and it has to change. It, it, they want to change it, clearly. That's what Rohit Sharma is telling us anyway, but we've not seen evidence of it so far in the Asia Cup. It's, you know, I mean, all right, KRL got out for a first ball duck against Pakistan, so it's difficult to judge him on that. But then given the opportunity yesterday to be out there for 39 balls against, you know, with all due respect, Hong Kong, you know, they're, they're decent cricketers. They put up a really good fight. Their spirit was great. But in terms of the quality of bowling overall, these are cricketers who, who can't get in first class teams back in their own countries. So this is the kind of attack he was up against. And 36 off 39 is is a shocking effort. It's not just a one-off. And that's why we're not laying into him just for this one innings. But is it unfair on him even from the selectors to keep picking him in T20 cricket? Because look, he, he'll be a fabulous ODI cricketer. He'll have a good career. He'll have a great test career, I feel, as well. This format's probably just not for him. I, you know, there, there's no. He has to open if he plays the format because that's when the power plays up and He's, he's quite a classical player. The field is up, rather, for the power play. He's a classical player. He can find those gaps when he wants to, but the intent just doesn't seem to be there. And then you can't bring him in. You can't then say, all right, it's not working as an opener. Let's put him in at 3-4-5 because he's not got that game to then kick on after the platform has been built. So it's it's a massive dilemma. And when you've got so many guys sitting in the wings for that opening slot, I mean, you, you could potentially put... Surya Kumar Yadav up opening if you wanted to, or Rishabh Pant has done it just a little bit recently, but I, I like that. I, I like the left hand, right hand, just the fact that Rishabh Pant, again, doesn't have the best strike rate early on in a T20I innings, but with the field up, he can take those risks. There's more gaps and he can get himself going. And, and I, I think that's probably the way that they should be looking at. But it's just one of those things, isn't it? I they're probably going to stick with him in the T20 World Cup now, yeah. aren't they? Given that he's the thing, here. yeah, the thing is, he it's not that he has always been this kind of a batsman in T20s. He was like so good in uh, 2019, 2018 in the IPL. He even has a 50 ball, um, 14 ball 50 in the IPL, which is like okay, he can do it, but probably off late he's not able to in the IPL 2020 and 21. Um, I read, a, uh, like, I saw that interview where someone was asking him if that's the approach he likes having in T20s, like scoring runs, but not at the fastest rate. And he said that that's not the way he likes batting, but that's the role the management has given him. So back then, you were kind of critical of Anil Kumble that, okay, Rahul bats a certain way, but uh, Anil Kumble, coach of Punjab Kings, um, he bats a certain way, but probably the management is asking him to ba uh, let go of that and bat with more responsibility. So that was a major reason he shifted to uh, Lucknow in this year's IPL. But then this year's IPL, he continued the same way. So it it's not that uh, management's changed. So there's no reason why he should have uh, kept on with the same approach. And also I was like looking at his stats. Uh, he has a strike rate of 115 in the power play in the IPL since 2020, which is just not good enough. Uh, as you said, there are so many players out there. There's even Prithvi Shaw. I have no idea why he's not in the ranks. He has a strike rate of 154 in the power play in the IPL. And if someone like Prithvi Shaw is sitting out, you just wonder what's happening. And uh, one more thing with KL Rahul is that uh, no one is doubting his talent. But kind of, uh, he's not able to translate it uh, against bigger teams. Like against teams like Australia, England, New Zealand, Pakistan, he averages 30 with a strike rate of 133 in T20Is. While against the lower ranked teams like the Namibia and all, he uh, averages 50 with a strike rate of 146. So it's not just an issue of... Uh, not doing it consistently, but he just does it. He's not able to do it against the higher rank sides, which, again, is he the best opener considering there are so many other options out there? 
Yeah, I mean, some might say he's, he's a flat track bully, given those stats as well, and, and not just based on the track, but also the opposition, of course. Yeah. Um, it's it, Well, the opposition yesterday wasn't one of the higher ranked teams um, and he didn't do it. So, look, it's, it's interesting with this Asia Cup as well, with the format, the fact that it's it's not a long tournament because there's not many sides in it, but the fact that you then have a Super 4 stage and then the final as well, it's not straight knockouts from now on. Do they look at someone else? And you're right about Britley Shaw. I mean, we'll talk about that in more detail in, in future episodes as well. But just briefly, um, you know, we do the IPL commentary over here for BBC. And one of my colleagues is Abhishek Junjunwala, who former Bengal cricketer, former IPL player as well. And we're both in agreement every time we see him play, even if it doesn't come off for him, just the intent that he has mm -hmm. at the crease, just to score from the off. He just wants to be like a Virenda Sewag at the top of the order and get his side off to a flyer. And, and more often than not, it has been coming off of late, even if it's a quick, you know, 25 off, off 12 balls or something like that. It really sets the tone at the start of the innings. And then when you're batting all the way down to number seven, you've got that luxury. It doesn't matter if he doesn't always score you a, a 40 or something like that. Even if he's getting quick fire 20s at the top of the order, that really puts the bowlers uh, off at the start and, and just shifts that momentum back to the batting side. So I can't understand that. I don't know if there's been fitness issues. That's been talked about a little bit of late um, in the field. Perhaps he might be a little bit of a liability uh, in that respect. Um, I mean, I, I don't know what the reason is, but we've got to work with what we've got at the moment. And we don't know if they're going to change that going into the Super 4. So we'll, we'll keep a, an eye on that. We'll preview um, the, the forthcoming matches as well uh, in a little while. But let's talk about the batting over there. So Kale Rahul didn't tick that box, which we were hoping he did. Virat Kohli. Now, look, some of the shots that Virat played yesterday, I mean, we were all drooling over them, weren't we? Let, let's be mm -hmm. honest. I mean, some of the, the slog sweep for six into the stands and... It was vintage Virat Kohli from sort of 2016 in T20Is. The whole innings didn't go that way. And we've got to give credit to the Hong Kong bowlers for the way they bowl, because you could see with Kohli, at least, unlike Rahul, that the intent was still there. But, you know, there, there was some decent bowling and, and it, you've got to just tip your hat to Hong Kong for that. But, you know, 57 or 44, is, it's all right, isn't it? If you've got a guy at the other end hitting as well as uh, Suryaka Mariyadav did. And if you had an opener who faced 39 balls, who maybe got 48 or 50 yeah. off that 39, then you'd be looking at 200 plus and you'd say, Kohli's done his job. That's his job in the side to do what he did. So thoughts on Kohli and his effort yesterday? Uh, with Kohli, it's like... Um... He always, he has always been that kind of a batsman. Many were, uh, at uh, when he was 30 and 30, many were criticizing, is this the right, like, approach or is he the best suited for this format? Uh, but Kohli has always been that kind of a player who strikes at 100, 110 in his first 25, 30 balls and then he gets going, which happened yesterday. It's great to kind of, you know, getting back into his rhythm. I wouldn't say he's got it. He's found that peak form. Uh, obviously, he hasn't, but showed signs. There were very few, uh, very amazing uh, uh, shots there the thing is he struggles against spin and it's no, no no hiding that he struggles against spin he has a strike rate of 105 in t20is against spin uh with kl rahul at the other end struggling against spin also there's only so much that uh kohli could do uh and once kl rahul was out Surya Kumar came in, he took on the spinners, he smashed two fours of the first two balls and again spin and that, you know, kind of eased Kohli also. So now either there are two options I see for Kohli, either he opens the innings, uh, he has a strike rate of 153 uh, against pace uh, since 2020, the years where he's been struggling, so to say, he has a strike rate of 153. So you think, okay, opening is the best place for him where uh, fast bowlers are there, he can get his rhythm, the field, like he'll have the advantage of the, the fielders in. Or either he bats with uh, people like Surya Kumar who can bash spin at the other end. So 
and that's why I think Rishabh Pant has to be there in the 11 also because Pant is a good hitter off spin in the middle overs. So, you know, if uh, Kohli is batting through the innings, I think that's his role also in the side. You can't have everyone who's just going at 200 strike rate. Uh, you need one player at least to, you know, guide guide the innings through. Uh, if there's Surya Kumar and Rishabh Pant to follow in the middle order and they are batting around Kohli, I think it will make it easier for Kohli and just to get his find his rhythm also. Yeah, it was it was nice to see though, wasn't it? It was I mean, you could see the crowd. It wasn't a full house, you know, it's the UAE. It's it's to be honest, it's a rubbish place to watch cricket, isn't it? Really. The atmospheres <laughs> are, are terrible. Uh, whether it's IPL, whether it's Asia Cup, you know they they make they do their best to come to the stadium. There's expat communities there from all the South Asian countries, but you know it wasn't full. But the the fans that were they were making a lot of noise. They were enjoying what they saw, and you know they were treated to to a Virat Kohli half century, and uh, you know some some beautiful sixes as a well. So a fifty after eighteen months in T Twenty eyes, we waited too long. Yeah, in T Twenty eyes. You know, it's, yeah, it's not been that years, long yeah. in, in other forms as well. So, yeah. you know, it's, it's it's not as if he's all right. He's he's set the standard so high, hasn't he? That that's his problem, I suppose. He's yeah. he was going to break all batting records that were ever created, apart from maybe Bradman's average, and and it just doesn't look like that's quite going to happen in in the same way. But it's just a delight to see when he's in any kind of flow, even if it's not full flow. So. We'll, we'll give him a, a half tick for yesterday or, or maybe a bit more than that just for the fact that, you know, he did his job. His job was to bat through the innings. He did that. Didn't have the best platform set for him by Rohit and Rahul, but then Sky came in and, wow, what a player yeah. Sky is. I mean, we, we know this. We've, we've seen him do this in the IPL for a few years and he is unbelievable when he gets in this kind of flow. And, yeah, it's Hong Kong. But he's done it against England. He's he's done it against you know bigger sides and he, whoever you put him up against, he does this, doesn't he? He he's just fabulous. How do you describe what kind of battery is for a start? Because three sixty would be one way, but it's not in the same way as AB de Villiers, is it? AB was more power, and yeah, he did have the the little bits of you know trickery to sort of do the ramp shots and the scoops and all that kind of stuff as well. But it was. It was more solid. It was different. I mean, Sky just dances around the crease. He's mm. like, he's he's got a bit of Vishwanath in a T Twenty kind of way. I would have thought, you know, that that's the best way to describe him: the the elegance, the 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 wrists, and and all that kind of stuff. But in a T Twenty beast mode as well, I think he's the best T Twenty batter in the world right now. Where where do you stand on yeah. that? His slowest fifty has come off thirty four balls, which is like, okay, wow, that's. That's like a dream for uh, KL Rahul right now, you know, to score a 50 <laughs> of 34 balls. So that's his slowest 50, which just shows, you know, how... I, I don't have a word for him, how crazy he's been. Uh, and it's he's not only power, he, he averages 40 in the format with a strike rate of 175. I don't see many batsmen, not only currently, but even in the history of T20Is who have, you know, managed to do, uh, to strike at that rate and have an average, you know, scoring for 40 per innings with that strike rate is just, I, I don't have a word for it. Uh, uh, yesterday, 60, I think his, uh, uh, 60 of his 68 uh, runs came in boundaries, which is just, you know, how dominant he has been against all si uh, all sorts of attacks. He's uh, scored runs in England, he's scored runs in the UAE, and yeah, he's just the best. I would say, like, last episode we were talking about Hardik Pandya potentially being the best Indian cricketer uh, in T20Is, but Surya Kumar is right up there. And, you know, having both of them in the side together is just very exciting. Also, it's very surprising to think that just two years ago, Surya Kumar Yadav was nowhere in the T20Is scene. He's been scoring runs forever. I've seen him, like, he was in KKR. KKR misused him as they misused all their players. He batted a number five, six, seven. Uh, but right then... Okay, we knew, okay, wow, he is something. Probably leaving KKR changed his career. Where, mm, so no complaints. 
Yeah. KKR can have a little bit of contribution. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll save the KKR bashing for, for another time, I think. <laughs> but, yeah, no, you, you're right. They, they did misuse him. And then, look, the Mumbai yeah. Indians, they have made it clear how highly they rate him, batting him at number three, retaining him ahead of, you know, some other bigger names as well in that franchise. Um, they, they know how important he is. And he's been doing it domestically as well. That's the thing. And to make your India debut after the age of 30, in a way, that's helped him. Obviously, he would have loved to have had a longer international career, but in a way, that's helped him because he knows his game better than anyone. He he knows exactly what he can do, what he can't do, where he's going to hit each ball, what situations or what. He would have faced all these different situations in the IPL so many times over and over again and playing for a really successful franchise like the Mumbai Indians, winning titles, being a key player in uh, all of those wins that he's been a part of as well. The fact that he's now a mature guy, and you just see that when he comes out, he's got the confidence of a Viv Richards or or anyone, any one of these sort of imposing figures from over the years who just comes out, and you just think immediately, this guy's got it. He He's, he's going to get us to a big total, or he's going to chase those runs down, and You've just got so much confidence. I remember I was at the T20 against England at Trent Bridge where, unfortunately, India lost but still won the series, of course. That was a final match. And he got that brilliant 100. And when he came out and started playing a couple of shots, everybody there just thought, this guy's going to do it. It doesn't matter what the total is. As long as he stays till the end, India will win this match. And look, it wasn't to be, but he took them bloody close in that. And... He, you know, the wickets were falling at the other end as well. He just kept playing those shots and, uh, you know, chasing anything over 200 in England, you know, against that bowling attack isn't easy. Uh, we saw the way Topley and, and Gleeson, all these guys just came into the side and despite the injuries England had, just were bowling so well throughout that series. So, you know, difficult to get these guys away, but he made it look so easy. I, I Honestly, if you're a batter, even if you're a Virat Kohli at the other end and you saw Virat Kohli letting him go off the field first and encouraging mm-hmm. the fans to give him a big ovation as he left the field for just a fabulous knock, if you're a fellow batter or if you're somebody like me, a failed cricketer um, at that top level, you're just envious of this guy, almost jealous of why, why can he do this? Why can't I do that? You know, even Kohli must have been thinking that some of the shots that he played yesterday, Kohli couldn't have played. No, nobody could have played. It's just fabulous to watch. And, you know, long may it continue. He, he's He's got to be a fixture, not just for the T20 World Cup, but even in the yeah. ODI side going forward to next year's World Cup. And then who knows? I mean, you know, cricketers go on a little bit longer these days with the fitness that they've got. He, he could go on and have a an international career, which is, you know, still significant, even though yeah. he came into the side after 30. Do, do you think there's a potential with the way he looks after himself that he might be like a, an Indian version of like a Mizbol Huck for w- what he was for Pakistan, making his debut so late, just discarded for so many years and then, you know, ending his career as as one of their best ever? Yeah, I would hope so. And with Surakumar, it's like, you know, yesterday, we, KL Rahul Kohli was struggling to get going. It was after a point you were wondering if it's a test match or, an, or an ODI. It was that boring. Uh, but then he comes in and then just the first, it's looked first two balls, he hits two fours. And, you know, the momentum changes. It looks like he's batting on a totally different pitch. Nothing like, Nothing uh, bothers him. And the best thing about him is that he maintains a strike rate against all kinds of bowlers and in different stages. Middle over, strike rate of 168. Death overs, he has a strike rate of 250, which is, you know, just mind-blowing. So, yeah, you're right. If he's not playing test cricket also, uh, and he's just playing white ball cricket, uh, he can go on to, you know, play for another... F- uh, four, five, six years. Uh, Rohit Sharma is 35, 36 now. You won't say he's the most fit cricketer around, but he's doing it till 20, 35, 36 next year. He, I think he'll be 37 before the 2023 World Cup. So if Rohit Sharma, so many others can do it, Dhoni continued, where I think, th- till 38 or something. So why not a Surya Kumar Yadav? And probably uh, what I also think is... Uh, 
he is the kind of batter uh, which we all expected Sanjay Samson to be. You know, he is that uh, consistent player. He scores runs uh, consistently with a very good strike rate. Sanjay Samson, you we all expected him for so many years. He'll be that kind of a uh, player and just take opponents, uh, take the bowling uh, attacks all over the park. But he's not been able to do it. Again, we'll discuss this probably later. But yeah, it's happy for Suru Kumar Yadav. It's been a long time coming and he deserves it. I'm going to come back to Roy Sharma in just a moment. But just before <laughs> I do... 99.94, of course, is just uh, is, is not just this podcast, a lot more than that as well. We've got uh, Red Inca, hosted by Jared Kimber. That focuses on deep issues within the game as well. There's Double Century, a look at the history of the game and uh, other countries as well uh, are looked at in more detail. There's England on 99.94. Uh, Daniel Norcross uh, always guaranteeing a few good laughs on that podcast, uh, along with uh, Rory Dollar. We've got the West Indies on 99.94, best Caribbean coverage there as well. And uh, we've just launched uh, recently South Africa on 99.94 as well. And lots more coming as well. You can find them all on your podcast apps by YouTube and on the 99.94 app. So go and download that now if you haven't done already. Roy Sharma, you, you, you mentioned his age quite a lot. And, and yeah, mm. conventionally... He should be looking at retirement in the next couple of years, you would have thought, logically. You know, the history of the game, the history of sport, that's that's what you do, right? Football, cricket, you know, there's tennis. Yeah. You're kind of mid-30s. That's it. You're, you're slowing down and you're done. Sachin went on till he was 40. Sachin wasn't, you know, they're both, they both work on their fitness. But, yeah, they're, they're not the best shape, if you know what I mean. They're both like eating they're not fat i'm not saying anything like that but they're not like a virat kohli who's got like you know one percent body fat or whatever and mm -hmm. you know treats himself to a slice of bread once every four years you know they 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 eat normally right they're such in a food connoisseur i know that for a fact everybody knows that and Roy sharma you know people joke about him the varapaos and all this kind of stuff he I love that guy because he makes me feel that I could still be a cricketer now. I, I like vada pals and bao bajis and whatever, man. Just give me all that food and give me a bat and let me go out and have a knock. It's just, I love that guy. He doesn't, he gets all that criticism from a certain section of fans. And, you know, there's been this whole Kohli, Rohit thing over the years and it's all stupid at the end of the day, but people like to have a dig. He just doesn't, he just, doesn't care. Yeah. It's not as if it's motivated him to then go to with to the gym with Coley or some of these other guys. He just does his thing, right? Does does his fitness work that he has to do. He's fit enough to play the game. He's fit enough yeah. to bat, field, captain, and he just goes and does it. And yeah, I, I love guys like that, like a Sewag at the top of the order. You know, just doesn't doesn't appear to care. Obviously, they L care. Lazy elegance. Yeah, he hates too. that. He hates that though. Yeah, he they, hates that. But <laughs> yeah. he's saying there's nothing lazy about what I do. You know, but it just yeah. it's just the way it appears on the screen that he's making yeah. so little effort for such brilliant rewards, and he looks so elegant when others just wouldn't have that time. It's the time, isn't it? And that's that's a skill. That's a talent. You've got to work on it as well, but just the extra split second that he has to play yeah. deliveries, I just love that. He guy, hates so. that word also. He hates that talented word. Everyone has been calling him the talented Roy Sharma. Yeah, it's almost he like he doesn't hates work. That also. It's almost yeah. like he he's got the tag of he doesn't need to work at his game. He's just you know God's given him yeah. this gift, and he goes out. Somebody <laughs> puts a bat in his hand, puts some pads on him, and a helmet and gloves, and off he goes. But he he obviously works very hard and. You know, hopefully, you know, if Sachin went on till he's 40, felt like he was 50. But, you know, and some may argue that he should have retired maybe two years earlier. But, you know, Dhoni till his late 30s as well. So Dhoni's still going, by the way, in IPL. Yeah. Just, just you know, to, to let everyone know in case you weren't still aware. Still one of the best wicket keepers. Yeah, absolutely. And, and the best captain probably still in that yeah. format of the game. And look, we've seen glimpses of him finishing games as well recently as well. So what more do you want? If you're an IPL fan, so you you got many more years of Dhoni. He'll he'll go on till he's about sixty three. I would have thought, and um, just just they, they need to wheel him out there in a wheelchair or something. He'll he'll be involved with the CSK for many years to come. And Let's just one bit, go on. yeah, one bit on Rohit was uh, 
I'm a big Virat Kohli fan and when he was sacked the whole captaincy mess I was just like okay Indian cricket yeah it will okay it won't have that intensity which Virat Kohli bought it was just I I was very disappointed after that whole incident but I've been very impressed with uh, Rohit Sharma the way he backs his players not only that like he's walking the talk he wanted uh, a more aggressive approach in T20s and he's the person who is doing that at the, at the top of the order Pakistan won bad game he's not scoring runs but then yesterday also strike rate of 161 so he has been you know even at this age because he's been um, age again i mentioned age but uh, for so many years we've associated him with being the t20i player who takes time to get in and then goes after the bowling but he he shows that you know that's just how talented he is even in his late 30s he has the game to adapt and uh, score at a faster rate so yeah he's been like very impressive yeah he, if you know even just the way he, he he's he's different like you say the way he gives interviews and just his whole mannerism yeah. like with Virat Kohli you ask him uh, even his way of you know telling the players that they are doing something wrong is like yeah. are some like something like that which is very different so yeah, yeah. i mean in press conferences it's, it's really i've i've interviewed rohit one to one on a few oh, occasions wow. haven't done yeah. kohli because kohli does the minimum you know when he was captain he wouldn't always do the post match and they'd send some it usually was rohit who they sent in white ball cricket because he was the vice captain so it was it got to a stupid point where the you know indian media management team just they probably didn't even ask kohli if he would do this interview they're just too scared of him and too much work for for king virat and all this kind of stuff even though we're rights holders um in the uk he'd only do sky sports and he wouldn't do bbc so that that's changed a little bit recently but obviously he's no longer captain so you don't get him so he would do the toss out in the middle and usually in t20s and odis we would as the radio commentary team have our radio mic and one of us would be out there and we'd interview both captains at the toss as soon as they've done the tv interviews we'd do the radio we'd walk back with them to the pavilion or wherever it was so we'd get owen morgan in those days this was a couple of years ago and then they'd send roy sharma who'd been in the dressing room <laughs> to say so virat's won the toss what yeah. would he have done uh no, sorry what virat's lost the toss what would he have done if he'd won which roy might know the answer to because they would have discussed it as a team but then you're basically asking him questions on behalf of Virat and it, yeah. is, it just got to a point where he's stupid but just the the, the fact you you could ask him anything he's just like eh, koi baat nahi even you know, his whatever. press conferences yeah uh, even yeah. his so uh, press conferences are so hilarious like i remember there was this one incident where someone was like tomorrow is dhoni's birthday what are you going to do and his answer was cake cutting or kya karenge so you know it's just <laughs> like uh, he's just so chill and uh, that's sort of being reflected on the field also and i think the players have a more calmer attitude overall uh it's not that he doesn't shout at the players we have seen instances where he's like having a go at bhuvi or shami also but yeah overall it's a more relaxed atmosphere i would say which for white ball works test cricket maybe you need that intensity a bit more which virat kohli was well suited for but yeah i think like my disappointment after the whole captaincy mess in december last year i think i'm at i am also at a more relaxed place i'm like okay whatever happened it was for the best kind just of just have a vara pao and chill <laughs> Not and enjoy the ride not a fan not a big fan oh man nope. <laughs> more for me then <laughs> right <laughs> let's move on to the bowling then the the bowling effort it wasn't great Yeah. For, particularly on a couple of fronts Let, let's talk avesh khan we we look we've talked about avesh khan as the t20 cricketer he's all right he can pull out a good performance every now and again does okay in the ipl had that one brilliant season uh, season before last where he was uh, the second leading wicket taker behind harsha patel is fairly consistent at the ipl level but can often also get taken to the cleaners can be hittable He's one of those bowlers who bowls a lot of length like Mohammad Shami 
in T20s, bowls a lot of length towards the back end of an innings as mm. well, or just in the middle overs, and maybe doesn't have enough variations or enough skill to be able to keep things tight. He's a wicket taker. We know he can take wickets. We know that he always takes wickets whenever he plays. But to go for over 50 in your spell against Hong Kong, yeah, Hong Kong, you know, we're not disrespecting them, but the manner in which he did, you know, he didn't have any answers to, to when they were hitting him. It just probably suggests that, look, he's not the man for this squad mm -hmm. going forward. And, and he probably won't be. He's probably in there because Bumrah's not there, Harshal Patel's not there. You know, there are other options. Bumrah will definitely be there. Harshal Patel will probably come back ahead in the queue, at least, of Avesh Khan, if not in the squad. So he probably won't be there, but it wasn't great. But also, we'll talk about Avesh and Arsteep as well. Arsteep, you know, going for 44 himself, this renowned death bowler who keeps things tight. You know, it wasn't his night. I, I think... For for Arshdeep, it was one of those nights yeah. where, look, it can happen to the best of them. It can happen to Bumrah once in a blue moon as well. He's he's there to stay, I feel. But Avesh Khan, I just don't think he's quite there yet. Yeah, so, uh, Arshdeep, yeah, one off night. Even against Pakistan, he was a little expensive. But I think we are overlooking the fact that India had been penalised for a uh, slow over rate and they had one fielder in uh, in the last two overs. So uh, that's when uh, Arshdeep, like, I don't remember how many runs he gave in his last over. But I think that's why his... Um, uh, Versus Pakistan? Run. Yeah. It was 11. Uh, 11. 11. Okay, yeah. So... I think that can be excused yesterday, one off day. It's good that it happened in on in a match against Hong Kong. He will learn from it because he's have been having so many good days. Uh, an off day was around the corner and we are happy that it wasn't in a high pressure game, so to say. Yesterday, um, India were had the advantage after Suru Kumar's knock, so no complaints on that front. With Avesh Khan, it's even more disappointing because he's been backed a lot by Rohit Sharma. He's played 15 T20Is. Um, and most of the time, like, you know, uh, even yesterday, Bhuvi didn't complete his quota of overs. Kohli came into bowl. An all-rounder, next in, next all-rounder for India. Who, who knows? I love seeing Kohli bowl. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you know, when I was younger, I used to do a bit of that off the wrong foot and kind of, you know, the, the yeah. head down. And yeah, he's just, honestly, my dad watched Kohli bowl years ago for the first time and said, that, that's how you used to bowl. So yeah. I love it whenever he comes into that attack. But obviously, Even yeah. Even Irfan Patan said he has a very good action. Yeah, so, yeah. exactly. But it shows so, that there were, you know, the options aren't great because you don't want yeah. him bowling against the bigger teams. And if that happens against a bigger side, that's a problem, yeah. isn't it? And yesterday with no uh, Hardik Pandya also, India just had five bowlers, which... Um, yeah, so Avesh Khan had to be at the top of his game. Uh, as I was saying, he's been backed a lot. He uh, In the second T20I against West Indies, uh, there was a toss-up. I think India needed 10, 10, 15 runs to defend. Uh, uh, Bhuvi had one over, Avesh had one over, and Rohit Sharma asked Avesh Khan to bowl. Uh, India lost that match, but uh, Rohit Sharma said that we want these kind of bowlers to go in and, you know, be in that situation. Avesh Khan has an economy of 9.1, which is not good at all. It's the highest by any Indian bowler in a calendar year, the, that economy rate, which shows that, you know, he's been back but not been able to live up to it. Even yesterday, there were no Yorkers. He's been down on pace, not bowling to the field also. So, probably still has some work to do. And do you think they should continue with him? in the Super 4, and also, like, once Hardik Pandya comes in, he didn't play yesterday, who do you think will be uh, dropped realistically? We know you want KL, uh, KL Rahul to go, but who do you think realistically will be dropped? If they stick with KL, then they, they've got two options. Look, they, I think they like the option of an extra bowler. So if Hardik comes mm. in... He can't they just should then, have an extra bowler. Yeah, because, so he, he can't yeah. just come in for Avesh because then he has to bowl four yeah. overs and, and, you know, he probably will, but then you, you've not got that other flexibility with the others. So 
he's look the change yesterday was Rishabh Pant comes in for for Hardik Pandya. Do they just go down that route? Rishabh unfortunately didn't get a knock yesterday. That would have been nice to see. Um, I know you you you're kind of in two minds about DK and and whether or not he should be yeah. in the side as well. What they will do, I think, is just Rishabh goes back out, Hardik comes in, and maybe if they drop Avesh, they bring in an Ashwin. I'd like yeah. to see Bishnoi, but they'll probably go Ashwin, just for the experience and and playing on the bigger stage and you know getting more serious through the competition in the Super Fours. That I, I think they'll go down that route. This is what should happen. Rishabh to open. Yeah. KL out. Hardik in. I would mind then... Kohli opening also. Yeah, yeah, but I'd love to see Rish. I think Kohli's okay mm-hmm. at number three because you lose an early wicket. Yeah. You need, you know, you need somebody like him, mm-hmm. um, who can play that other role as well of just eating up a few balls. So, I I think that's okay if uh, Rishab was to open. Kale's out. Hardik comes into the middle order, and then I would take Avesh out, and then either Bishnoi or Ashwin. Uh, it's, it's a toss up between the two. I I said earlier that I'd love to see Bishnoi in there, but yeah. given he hasn't played in the t- you know yesterday was a good time to blood him in the tournament, I felt. But the fact they haven't, I think they have to go with Ashwin now because it's serious business now in the tournament. There, there's no. It could be India Pakistan. Yeah. Yes, next match. Absolutely, yeah. unless Hong Kong do do a job on Pakistan, which we're not expecting. <laughs> so we are expecting. Another India Pakistan as well, so it, you know on that stage you don't want to throw Ravi Bishnoi in there necessarily. So somebody like an Ashwin's good. He could come in as a pinch hitter, couldn't he? Yeah. Number three or four. We've seen that in the IPL. Loves loves that role, doesn't he? And to be fair, look, he's not the cleanest hitter of the ball. He's not the biggest hitter. He's not his game, but he took it on. You know, he was like, yeah, I'm going to try he and do it. He finished the game it, with a six. Yeah, on, so exactly. I so it yeah. came it came off on two occasions um, in last season's IPL. So he. he even if he doesn't do that, we're just joking about being a pinch hitter. But, you know, it's that extra batting depth down the order as well. And if if it's getting tight and you need to finish off a game, he's not a bad man to have coming in. So gives you that other option. And, you know, world-class bowler, of course, as well. And, and has had a, you know, rejuvenation, really. A resurrection almost in, in the last couple of years in white ball cricket. So yeah. I would like to see that, but... Let, let's see what, what they decide on in the end. Uh, you, you and I um, have, have been wrong on a couple of occasions, not yeah. not necessarily because, you know, we've been wrong in terms of our team selection, but who knows what's going through the mind of uh, Rohit and uh, and Rahul Dravid as well. A few episodes well. ago, I had said I wouldn't want K- uh, Virat Kohli in my T20. I, in have, you, have you changed that stance? I, too early yes. to say. I'm a bit, yes. I, I don't have. want to be... I can see. I don't want to jinx him. I, I'm a big jinxer. Like, when he's batting, I'm like, he who should not be named is batting. Oh, my God, he's scoring. He's at 40. Don't jinx, don't jinx. So, I, I'm that kind of a He who should not be named. You sound yeah. like you're talking about Lord Voldemort in, in Harry Potter, aren't you? You know, he don't say that <laughs> yeah. name. Don't say I'm that name. I'm very superstitious about Kohli, so... Okay. I'm not saying well, anything, let, let, but let's people not, know. Yeah. All I said is, is it's nice to see him playing those sixes, and it was it was a delight yeah. to everyone, wasn't it? And uh, you know, long may it continue. We'll 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 definitely see more of him through the Asia Cup. You'll hear more from us as well. We'll be back very soon with another episode as well. Uh, just another plug for our 99.94 app. Go and download that now. Uh, you can listen to this podcast, other podcasts as well and uh, live commentary streams, which we'll be bringing you more of as time goes on as well. But uh, for this episode, thank you very much for listening and goodbye.